<clears throat> hey guys, I want to um, reiterate the 5 a.m. prayer. And I want to add something to it. It's time to humble ourselves and pray and weep between the porch and the altar. It's a dream I had last night. Of course, we all know the scripture. It's one of my most, one of my favorite scriptures, but Second Chronicles seven fourteen. But I was just I was about to go to sleep. I mean, kind of in in between drifting off and not. Um, and I just kept going through my mind. And then I had a dream about it all night. The Lord was really impressing upon me the humble peace. It's going to bring true repentance. If we're not going to humble ourselves, because right now, everybody's, you know, coronavirus crazy. And the seriousness of it, and I get the seriousness of it. but they're not humbling themselves. It's kind of business as usual. The government will help us out, blah, 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 da, da, da. And it's the wrong solution, guys, to this. Appreciate maybe anything they do, but not really. Guys, this bailout thing, the coronavirus is just dead more to the debt. We can't pay. It's a bill we're not going to pay. Can't pay. One day it's going to crater on us. But, you know, that's a whole other story. But the humble piece is we've got to learn to quit trusting in the arm of the flesh and trust in Him. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Pray because we'll get direction. Seeking His face, guidance, wisdom from above. Divine direction, not our direction, not our fleshly desires and wants and needs even. We're healing for the nation, for the world. Seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, to repent, change. Guys, I didn't flip this switch. God allowed it to happen. Where'd you go to church today? Other than YouTube or Instagram or tuned in on the computer. We are as church guys. But the world doesn't think there's any power in it. Or they wouldn't have just cast it aside like it's a dirty diaper. <clears throat> Humble ourselves, pray, repent, then you'll hear from heaven. Heal the land. Guys, we're not there yet. And it's time for us as Christians to take the stand and to pray and to weep between the porch and the altar and humble ourselves. And get others to see their folly. Because there is a storm coming, guys. I get the seriousness of this. I'm not discounting it at all. And there's plenty of... You know, I'm not discounting the people that are really sick and the people that are dying. And I actually have a prayer request in amongst this for a friend that goes... That we used to go to church with and a, a church we no longer go to. Her name is Mark. I'm not going to say his last name. But let's pray for Mark. Been sick for six months that I know of. And so I don't know that was always, but now he's got the coronavirus. <clears throat> he's in intensive care. He was in intensive care from the hospital. He got better a few days ago, a week ago, and now he's back to, in bad shape. So I get the seriousness of it, guys. It's touched me. I got a, you know, like I said, I got a friend that I really loved still love and respect and I'm sure if some of y'all that have lost loved ones even that the, the, the death has hit or the sickness has hit or that are really sick I get the seriousness of it guys but the real seriousness of it honestly the even more seriousness of it is God wants to get our attention and to get us on our knees 
You get every need about a little neology and get out of this theology. <clears throat> All this stuff that we used to call church. Some of it wasn't even called church. It was just called just different things. It mean, it's too surreal. God saw through all that. Shut it down. Some of them may survive. Most of them won't. Now I know everybody wants, you know, you don't got something good to say, don't say anything. I got plenty to say. The good news of the gospel. God's grace is sufficient. His blood is sufficient. There's so much good in God, but he's giving us an opportunity and a chance to turn. Because, guys, we drifted away. There was a reason why you let all this supposed church and this religiosity crater. I asked him that. Like, my God, I seemingly just flipped a switch and suddenly we have no churches. Oh, yeah, and YouTube and all that stuff, you know, but took me back to something that happened 10 years ago. I used to sell cars, I liked it for a while because I was on the internet, but I hated the lot. No, when I was on the internet, it was fine, but I did it for about a year and a half. Just got out of that business. But I was driving by this building about 10 years ago. And they hadn't been there for a year or two. And it's a really nice building, guys. The place where people picked up their cars was a, a covered covered area, but it was a you know, parking lot, but it was tiled. I mean, it was a really nice building, guys. Really nice inside. Everything was, man, it was really nice. They were tearing it down. I was like, man, God, they're tearing down a perfectly good building. Well, <clears throat> took me back to that. He said, that's what happened today. Because these houses were built upon sand. And he wants to build them upon the rock. The whole deal about Peter and the Revelation, who do men say that I am? Son of the living God, Christ. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, Peter, but upon this rock I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell will not, shall not prevail. Upon this truth. <clears throat> so... Sorry, guys, but God's got the last say-so on this. The same thing with this coronavirus mess, too. <clears throat> Where are we going to land? Yeah, I know. It, you know, shelter in place, live or whatever you call it. Locked up. Don't go to work. Don't do this. Don't do that. Stay home. Stay home. Stay home. That's all you hear. Okay, great. Fine couple weeks are well, we going to be in three months guys if this keeps up and this is the fear part of a message I'm saying it's just getting to be going to be a mess they tell the power company people to stay home then, then what okay so what I'm telling you guys is it's time to weep between the porch and the altar we're not in trouble we're out of out of touch with the reality of God so yes, we are. We gotta get back to that. That's where the real depth of this is, guys. It's not fear. It's it's reconnecting with with Him, with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And you're not gonna get it. And we weren't getting it, most of it, from the surreal church world because it had become a circus or just a show. Most of it, honestly, a lot of it. Lights, camera, action, bigger band, and just, you know, like a rock concert, a lot of it, just garbage. No real truth, no real word, no real love, just, you know, a money game, kind of, honestly. All the kinds of, man, it was a mess, guys. Why did it get, just, I didn't do it. I'm not, you know, 
didn't prophesy anything about it. Told the truth, but God did it. Why? Because he wants his people back, guys. He wants us to, to worship him in spirit and in truth. Not in what mostly we call dirt. Not, not in all that, you know, he didn't want any more pollution in it, more garbage. So we've got an opportunity. Pray. Humble ourselves. Weep between the porch and the altar. Get a hold of him for direction. I'm not telling him to do anything other than this one thing, that one thing. Get it for yourself, guys. And the more of us that do at five in the morning, the greater he's going to be. And the more glory he's going to get. And this mess can get cleaned up pretty quickly. So, let's just pray, guys. And quit. Man, the mother, I guess I will tell you this one thing. Shut the news off, guys. Honestly. Or tune, tune it way down. Turn it way down. Very little, if any. Because we're just feeding that beast. <clears throat> and that fear mongering. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, let's just get a hold of him. His truth. And wake up and smell the coffee. I will end with this because some people still aren't getting it. Even in the supposed church world. I'm looking at people on Instagram it's like, man, it's all about food and just different things and you know, they're making a pot of coffee, and it's like, man, it's, yeah, I get the coffee piece. It is time to get up and smell the coffee. <clears throat> wake up, guys. It's time to wake up. This is a wake-up call. It's a warning from the Lord. <clears throat> and there is a storm coming. I'm making this up. 8-11 to 9-11. Look it up. Watch the video. It'll really clue you into some stuff which a lot of people already, some people already know. And I mean, it's coming, guys. <laughs> More than one, probably. This is just a prelude to it. This is a, yes, this is a serious storm because you need to look around. <laughs> this is not a fear message, guys. It is not to get you to, this is not a scared straight message to get you to run to Jesus because you're scared to death or of death. This is man, guys. That's, that's where the goodness of Jesus is. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. Jesus was his goodness to mankind. That he so loved the world. There is really good news, guys. Just you got to listen. You're not going to listen if you're not in prayer, if you're not seeking him, if you're not crying out between the porch and the altar right now, weeping because as a nation, and as a world. That's where he wants us, guys. He's going to direct us. He's got to direct us. Yes, plenty of good news. It's all good news. Unless if we're not listening. Unless if we harden our heart. Unless if we're that lukewarm or cold church. Our people. Then it, then it may not be good news, guys. Sorry to tell you that. So we love you. Um, let's get Let's get this right. Well, we have the opportunity to. Well, God's grace is sufficient. While well, his blood is there. While well, the covering is there. Well, he's saying, hey, come back to me. Turn to my people. So anyhow, we love you guys. Talk to you soon.